Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, darling, it's nearly midnight. Wake up and wish me Merry Christmas. David, how can you be so sound asleep on Christmas Eve? David. Hey, David, where are you? Stop playing possum. Oh, where's that light? Ouch. Ooh, bright. David. David, where did you go? When did you get out of bed? Darling, you all right? Where are you? Oh, where are my slippers? Oh, God, it's cold. David, you go downstairs? Oh, Shakespeare, did you see David get up? Where'd he go? Huh, he left the light on the hall. Well, that's funny. David, you downstairs? David! Claudia, oh. is that you? Mama, what are you doing up at this hour? What are you doing up at this hour? Well, I'm looking for David. A fine time of night to lose a husband. I imagine. Where I, I woke up and he wasn't there. Maybe he's downstairs having a glass of milk. Oh, poor glass of milk. I didn't think you'd swallow that. <laughs> Maybe he's down having a smoke. He knows he can smoke in the bedroom. Mom, I called him and he didn't answer me. Shh. You wake up, Mr. Killian. Now, who is Mr. Killian? You know perfectly well. You mean Roger? Call him Roger. I try to, but he's... he's so correct. Oh, he's David's partner, too, and he's a wonderful man, so you can call him Roger. Besides, he gets furious when you don't. Oh, I, I just felt it when I was asleep that David had left. Why didn't you put on your slippers? You'll catch your death. Mama, is that all you can think of at a time like that? It, it's sort of not like David. I'm worried. Come into my room. You're shivering. Mama! Stop frightening me like that. What is it? The barn! What about the barn? I am a dope. I'll bet you ten cents that's where David is. What would he be doing in the barn at midnight? Taking Majesty's pulse. What do you think? I must say the thought never occurred to me. See? I was right. Look, here out of your window, I can see a light in the barn. I hope he put on his overcoat. Oh, the idiot. All day he's been jumpy. You know, I think he's more excited about Majesty having a calf than he was about becoming a father. I wonder if she really is freshening or if David made a wild goose chase. Too bad that husband of yours couldn't have been a doctor as well as an architect. I guess I better go get him. I'll spend the whole night there waiting. Fritz said it'd be any day now. Now, you go back to bed, Mama. If you're going, I'm coming too. You have a cold beginning. That calf will not be born without me. No, he might not be born at all, Mama. Go back to bed. Stop bossing me. You're not my mother. No, but you're mine, so do what I say. Go back to bed and don't argue. Then you go back to bed too. Oh, no, it's too lonesome without David. I just toss. Oh, creature of habit. I give in. But put on something warm. It's dark and windy out. Maybe it is with cars the way it's with people. Maybe what is? Having their babies at night. Oh, Mama, pray it's a heifer. Why? Because farmers always kill veals, and if it's a heifer, you'll practically be able to go in the milk business. Stop counting your quarts before your calf's born. <laughs> I better go over to the barn, so... Good night, Mama. Sweet dreams. If anything important happens, you will be the first to know, Grandma. Yeah, I better be. If anything's going on, don't disturb it. David. David. You you here in the barn? Gloria, is that you? David, what's going on? Majesty. Where is she? She's not in her stanchion. She's on a bed of hay in the corner. Is everything all right? Can I see her? Fine, yeah, sure. Come on. Mm, such a sweet animal smell in the barn. The night outside so windy and cold. There. David, the cow! <laughs> Just born. It's here. You like it? Oh, why didn't you call? <laughs> I am furious at you. Can he talk how it... I never saw a newborn calf. Mother and child are doing fine, thank it's you. It's simply beautiful. Oh, I wish I'd been here. Mama, too. You, uh, you approve of Majesty's offspring? David, I had no idea it'd be this way. <laughs> so, so... Perfect looking. 
Say, Majesty doesn't mind our being here. Oh, Majesty's a pretty proud cow. She doesn't mind visitors. Hello, Majesty. Congratulations. Oh, David, she... She makes me feel so inadequate. Hey, look, the calf's standing up. Oh, look at it, trying to stand on its legs. Yeah, there's no fooling around with animals. When they're born, they're just born. Hey, Majesty. It's so soft and damp. Oh, David, it's such a miracle. Next time I want to come earlier... Oh, why didn't you call me? I, uh, I was kind of busy. Mm, I guess. <laughs> Listen, Ruby knows. <laughs> of course she knows. She's been giving me advice all evening. Yes. Was it bad? How'd you know what to do? Uh, I don't know. I just knew. You're wonderful. Is she all right, David? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's fine. She behaved beautifully. She looks so peaceful and quiet. David, is it a heifer? Mm-hmm. It's a heifer. You know, we can practically start a dairy farm now. We are so blessed. Everything comes out right. Look at it. Look at it wobble. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? For a two-minute old lady, that's pretty good walking. Yes. Huh? <laughs> he looks like a great mascara of beauty, doesn't she? <laughs> What's Majesty saying? Is she all right? Oh, sure, she's fine. Oh. She's just giving her calf some advice. She also gave her a push. Look, now she's walking away from it. David, doesn't she want it? Well, of course she wants it. Well, she doesn't look like she, she does. She just wants to make it strong. She she wants it to come after, see? You know, I... I... <laughs> I feel as if I'd been let in on some profound secret. It's as if I hadn't loved you before. I didn't even know what Bobby meant before. We'll raise this heifer and put her out to pasture, and in a couple of years she'll she'll be giving us a calf of her own. Life is very generous, isn't it? Yeah, if she's allowed to be. David, are other cows as superior as Majesty? I guess they're all pretty swell. Hello, you darling. You lovely girl. Congratulations. Hello there. Claudia, David. Hello. Roger, what are you doing up? I heard some noise in the hall a while back and saw the light in the barn. Majesty is open for congratulations, Roger. Well, I'll be... What a beautiful cat. No, heifer. A heifer at that. Hmm? Well, David, you must be very pleased. Oh, I am. She looks like she'll grow to be a fine cow, doesn't she? Of course. She? Look who her mother is. And her godparents. Thank you. Very impressive. A new calf. It's almost religious. Not almost. I think it is. I'm sorry I came so late. Well, it's David's fault. He now, stole away into the night, kept it all to himself. Not a very nice way to behave. And Majesty agrees. Say, David, put on your jacket. You'll be freezing. I'm all right. I'm fine. Long legs she has. Look at it. She's a little bit knock kneed but so beautiful and silky. Hey, uh, what's going on here? Something going oh, on hello. I don't know about? Well, we just had a heifer, Mr. Tucker. You Come on don't in. don't say. Yeah. I always knowed you could depend on a cow like Majesty. She's from good stock. Good. Where'd you come from at this hour, Mr. Tucker? From over my house. Where'd you think? Well, son, if you ain't a lucky beginner, a heifer, you say? Yeah, there she be. Uh, I'll be god danged. A heifer's all right. What a heifer. She'll be good to you, son. She acts like her mother. Yeah, you'll be floating in cream in no time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Tucker. Oh, oh, you here too, Mr. Killian? Any reason why I should not be? <laughs> Ain't a barn at midnight a strange place for a city man? Isn't it a strange place for anyone, except a cow? Well, I wouldn't say that it was. Mr. Tucker, how'd you happen to... to... Well, I seen the light in the barn. Don't you sleep at night? Oh, not as much as you young'uns do. When you got less life ahead of you, not that I ain't got a lot, you, you don't need so much sleep to tussle with it. So when I seen the light, knowing Majesty was getting set to freshen, why, I, I come a-running. Well, it was a pretty nice thing for you to do, Mr. Tucker. I'm your neighbor, ain't I? What goes on in your barn is as much my business as yours, and vice versa. Look at her nuzzling up to Majesty. <laughs> Majesty's so mother-like. Animals just know more than we do, don't they? Their instincts are so much righter. Well, our instincts are all right, but... It's what we put on top of them that gets all mixed up. <laughs> David, I think you're a selfish monster not to have called us sooner. Mom will be furious. So am I. Well, now, don't you think that Majesty deserves some privacy? Frankly, no. A birth in the barn is too special an event. A birth in the... Say, what time is it, somebody? Um, just about midnight, it is. Well, then it's just about Christmas. So it is. With all the excitement, I almost forgot. Here we all are. In the barn. 
I'd rather see Christmas come in from here than any other place. And you're not the first, darling. That's true. Roger, Mr. Tucker, and David. Three men who came to a barn. Yes, many, many hundred years ago. Christmas came to a manger. A child was born. I wish we were the three wise men. The world sure could use them today. Yes. The next morning there was new light to the world. There have always been some men who have been trying to put it out ever since. Oh, David, look at the calf nuzzling up to Majesty. Majesty licking her as if the whole time and heart of the world were hers. I wish I were Majesty. What's the matter with life, anyway? Look how beautiful it can be. Majesty, she knows. <laughs> it's not life, I'm afraid. Life keeps right on giving. Times it does seem like it's been wasted on a troop of idiots. Oh, but we're learning. Maybe if someday they, there were to be another birth in a barn, why, maybe we'd be ready for it. Well, get some rest, Majesty girl, and when Christmas morn comes, I'll bring you a special lick of salt, girl. For ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Well, good night, girl. Winds died down. Night's clear. All the stars. I never saw so many stars. See the bright one in the east. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry yes. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. And thanks for coming, Mr. Tucker. Oh, any time, any time. For I be your neighbor, ma'am. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yonder. While St. Nick is harnessing his reindeer for the famous midnight ride, your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola and the cast of Claudia welcome this opportunity of saying Merry Christmas to you and your family. I'll never forgive those children, Mr. King. Uh, because David didn't call you for the big event? Imagine Majesty having her heifer and I wasn't even there. <laughs> well, better luck next time. Small consolation. Good heavens, I've forgotten to wish you a Merry Christmas. And the same to you, Mrs. Brown, and many, many more. I hope so. Look, it started to snow. Snow. Isn't that wonderful? Just what we hoped for. Hmm. It'll be a white Christmas. Well, I guess I'd better hustle back to bed. Yes, uh, Claudia mentioned that you were catching coal. I hope that oh, you don't... Oh, it's nothing serious. I just hope I don't pass it down to the children, that's all. Well, we'll find out more about that on Monday. See you then, Mrs. Brown. Merry Christmas to your family, Joe. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>